welcome to our online worship service. Stephen is away on vacation until August 23rd. We pray that he will have a restful holiday. During this time, various church leaders are participating in the service. Myron D'Souza, our music director. This week, I'm honored to be part of your worship experience. My name is Denise Byard, and I'm parish administrator as well as child youth and family outreach coordinator at Church of the Holy Trinity in Guildwood. I've invited some young people to help me introduce the service, Avaya and Rogelio. We are excited about the good news of Christ and hope it can bring. We are so glad you can worship with us. Physical distancing need not be safe distancing. If you're joining us for the premiere on Sunday at 10.30 a.m., you're invited to use the live chat feature, which is found on the right-hand side of your screen, as long as your screen is not in full screen mode. It's wonderful to have you with us. Please comment, like, and or subscribe. Let us open our hearts to the presence of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ said the hungry, was the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom, the new people with your heavenly grace, and all our weaknesses sustain us by your trust and living bread, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now I'd like to invite Eva to read the first scripture for us. A reading from the book of Genesis. The same night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his 11 children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came and said to him, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. 
and those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. The Gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In today's lesson, we have a very well-known account of Jesus' multiplication of the bread. I'd like to look behind it to start with the Old Testament uh, text. We remember the story of Moses leading Israel out of bondage in Egypt towards the promised land. What happened? Did he take the 401 in a tour bus? No, they went on foot through the desert, a place of precariousness, a place of danger. Now, we hear the word desert, we think of the Sahara with windswept uh, sand. But in fact, that's not what the Sinai is like. When I was a student at the um, French Biblical and Archaeological School in Jerusalem, we did a field trip in Sinai, and we actually camped under the stars. So I, I spent a number of days camping throughout the Sinai, so I've got a pretty good sense of the lay of the land, geographically speaking. Uh, in that context, we're not dealing with windswept Sahara-type desert. You have granite peaks and mountains, and in the middle you have what they call a wadi, a kind of a valley filled with, with earth and, uh, and sand. But it doesn't rain there, hence it's a desert. But you come around a corner and suddenly you see an oasis, water from the water table gushing up, and you have all of these palm trees in the middle of this desert. But it's a place in which there's danger. I remember I was walking around near our campsite and my foot went through what was a, an underground tunnel. And I thought, what's this about? I looked over and there was a snake looking out of a, a hole, wondering, How are you, why are you collapsing my house? I was a little bit concerned about the snake, so I took off pretty quickly. There's danger, there's no food, there's no water, and you get these kind of dangerous beasts around the area. This is the type of environment that they're in. And in that context, what do they say? Moses, thank you for leading us into this wonderful desert. No, they, we had food and drink of plenty back in Egypt. How dare you, Moses? They lack confidence. They lack trust. They started murmuring and complaining. What did Moses do? Moses prayed to God, and God had compassion on his people. God called them to this place. God had compassion on them in his desert place and made provision, what, of manna, bread, and quail, meat. God provided. This is the backdrop of the story of the feeding of the 5,000. If you read the text, it's, the Matthean uh, version is actually simply based on Mark. Mark provides the central narrative for actually all three Gospels, even, even John. And in it, you find Jesus withdrawing to as a deserted place, a desert. And what do the, the people do? They go out of the villages, out of the towns. They're following the boat. They're looking for, they want to be near him. They gather around him. You have this new Israel, the new people of God, called out from their own bondage to follow Jesus as the way of hope to this new promised land. This new faithful realm gather around Jesus. And Jesus has compassion on them and he recognizes their need. What is their need? They're hungry, they're thirsty. They need something from Jesus. Jesus heals them, but he goes beyond that. He then replicates what Moses did in providing bread and meat. So you have a very direct parallel showing Jesus as the new Moses, leading the new people of God into the promised land by making provision for the, 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 the daily needs in this desert place. Now, what's interesting about this text is the degree to which it foreshadows the role of the church. It's not individualistic. Jesus doesn't snap his hands and suddenly quails and manna fall from heaven. What does he do? He turns to the disciples. He gets them and you gather the crowd, get them, sit them down into various groups. What do you, what do you have? What are, in your, what are your resources? What do you have to offer? Well, we've, we've got 
we've got some bread, and we've got some fish. Good enough. They're the ones that then gather the crowds, marshal them into divisions, and they're the ones that have to exercise faith in obeying Jesus and distributing the bread and, and, the, and the fish. And quite surprisingly, they keep giving it. Like, for example, with Elisha, remember the woman and the supply of the oil and the bread uh, when Jesus was visiting her? You get that same provision. Uh, you any also the provision of oil in the temple at Hanukkah uh, after the, the consecration of the temple. God in compassion meeting the needs of the people of God at that place. But it involves the accountability of the disciples. So they're the ones that hand out the five loaves and the two fish, seven, a kind of a perfect number. Seven of the menorah and the days of the week. There's new, numerology going on behind that. But at the end, there are 12 baskets left over. What's this all about? It's foreshadowing some of, of, of um, the notion of the church. If you go to um, uh, Matthew 19, 28, you'll find something quite interesting. Truly, I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the kingdom comes in its fullness, when the Son of Man is seated on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me, those who have come out of the villages to, to follow me, these 5,000 and others, will, um, those who follow me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the tw 12 tribes uh, of Jerusalem. Everyone who has left houses and brothers and sisters, father, mother, fields, for my name's sake, will receive a hundredfold. So he's looking at the apostles, the 12 apostles, representing the 12 tribes of Israel, gathering the elect, and having this intermediary role of, of judgment, uh, of administration, of uh, oversight. In other words, you have the sense of the apostles and the church as the institution to which God gathers. He doesn't do it directly, but uses the church to gather this new people. This, I think, is a really important uh, text in the light of a pandemic. We feel we're in a desert. Our jobs are at stake. Our livelihoods, all that I worked for throughout my life, could be gone overnight. I don't want to get sick and die. My, I'm afraid for my relatives. We're going to go back to school. How safe is this for my kids? We have all sorts of preoccupations in a sense, in that desert where we have that sense of, hmm, I just felt something collapse under my foot. And there's a snake looking at me with beady eyes, you know, from that, uh, from that sand dune. Hmm, this is not a nice, comfortable place to be in. Where is God in all of this? And at this point, the interesting part of this passage is God doesn't snap his fingers and remove all of these problems miraculously. God uses the church, uses the people of God, uses the disciples to take what they have, the bread, the fish, what they have, and share resources, gather together, and through the solidarity of the church, God will meet our needs where, they, where we, we are and in the crisis of the moment. So this passage challenges us to gather together as Christians, to share what we have with others, give that person a call. How are you doing? Do you need anything? I mean, I, I donate money to the United Jewish Appeal, and I got a phone call a couple of days ago. And I'm like, what's the Jewish Appeal calling me if they probably want my money? No. The person on the other end of the line said, I'm calling from the United Jewish Appeal. We want to know how you're doing. Do you have any needs, any problems? If you need food delivered to your house, call us. We'll arrange for somebody to deliver food to your house. And I thought, they get it. This is a tzedakah, the righteousness. There's a fundamental part of, of Judaism. And this is what this passage is about. How can you help your neighbor? How can you gather together to meet the needs of the community? And through us, God will meet those needs. Not by snapping fingers, but by allowing us to be used by God to be agents of healing and hope. So I commit to you this text, this passage, the feeding of the 5,000. We have resources. We have a dynamic church. 
And if we just allow God to use us, we can be a tremendous force for healing and wholeness in the world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you've called us to be a people of compassion, a people of hope, and a people of sharing. Pour out your spirit upon this church, upon this community, that through us we may be a healing blessing to the world, to the nations, and to our community. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you are the bread of life. Feed us now and evermore. Lord, you are the bread of heaven, giving life to the world. You fill our emptiness with your goodness. You come to our weakness with your strength. Come, refresh, renew, restore us. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is with the Father and the Holy Spirit, lives in glory everlasting. Lord, you are the bread of life. Feed us now and evermore. We pray that the church may hunger and thirst after righteousness. May the church seek to care for and feed the hungry in spirit. We pray for the clergy and people of the new province of Alexandria, created from the former diocese of Egypt with North Africa and the Horn of Africa in the Episcopal Church of Jerusalem and the Middle East. We pray for the people and clergy of the spiritual ministry of Mishimakawish, Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Linda, our primate, Anne, our metropolitan, Andrew, our diocesan bishop, and Kevin, our area bishop. In our parish family of Holy Trinity Guildwood, this week we pray for Sandra Wozni, Tim Weeb and Ellen Anderson, Elizabeth Wilson, celebrating a birthday, Ellery Vancourt and Daphne Hamill, celebrating an anniversary, Jim and Rachel Bowles, our priests, Stephen, Harold, and Ravi. For those who've asked for our prayers, Ellen, Glennis, Lynn Marie, Scott, Mark, Kathy, Pauline, Nancy, Frida, Alf, June, John, Richard, Wendy, and for any others known to you. May we seek out the lost and those in desert places and offer them the sustenance of the gospel. We pray for Bible study groups and outreach groups. Lord, you are the bread of life. Feed us now and evermore. We pray for the starving peoples of our world, those who suffer from famine, poverty, or war, all whose lives are diminished through malnutrition and neglect. Let the harvest of our world be neither hoarded nor squandered. We pray for all whose lives are fragmented, for all who are broken. Lord, you open your hands and satisfy the needs of every creature. Lord, you are the bread of life. Feed us now and evermore. We give thanks for those who have fed us and cared for us. We remember all who have sown compassion and tenderness. Lord, bless our loved ones, our homes, and our communities. Fill our deep longing for you with your presence and your peace. Lord, you are the bread of life. Feed us now and evermore. We pray for all who feel drained and empty, all who have no energy or strength. Lord, have compassion upon the weak, the weary, the harassed, and the helpless. We come to you for renewal, refreshment, and hope. For all who are affected by COVID-19, for the healing of pain, frustration, and anger in indigenous and black communities, May all human beings learn to live as a family in unity and diversity. Lord, you are the bread of life. Feed us now and evermore. We pray for our dead. Ernest, Donald, John, Lillian, and Peter Johnson. We give thanks for those who no longer hunger or thirst, for they've been refreshed in your kingdom. May we look forward to the day when we share with them in the glory which is everlasting. Lord, you are the bread of life. 
Feed us now and evermore. And now let us join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Following our Sunday morning premiere, there's a social time and Bible study on Zoom. Please email the church and we'll send you the link along with our newsletter together at Trinity. Please subscribe to our Holy Trinity YouTube channel. You can donate online at Canada Helps. Thank you for your support and generosity. We look forward to having our first physically distant service together on Sunday, September 13th. Stay tuned for more details. We are eager to share with you news. Please like, comment on, and share the video. Share what you love for those you love. In the comments, please let us know what you think about the video and how God's love works through us. Almighty God, bless us and bless us, and bless us and bless us. We celebrate freedom and look forward to our Ontario Civic Holiday honoring Sir John Graves Simcoe, who when he was the Lieutenant Governor of Ontario in the 18th century, was the first to abolish slavery in the British Empire. Through today's scriptures, message and prayers, the Kingdom of Heaven has come near. Proclaim the good news. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. The Church of Christ in every age beset by change but spirit led must claim and test its heritage and keep on rising from the dead across the world across the street the victims of injustice cry for shelter and for bread to eat and never live until they die for he alone whose blood was shed can cure the fever blood and teach us how to share our bread and feed the starving multitude we have no mission but to serve in full obedience to our lord to care for all without reserve and spread his liberating 